anger that exists on the left toward people who are culturally on the right. I'm not even talking about people who are politically on the right. I'm talking about people who, for example, own a gun. If you own a gun, there are a lot of, I've spent my entire life living in Los Angeles and Cambridge, Massachusetts, being surrounded by people on the left. If you say that you own a gun around people on the left in Los Angeles or in Cambridge, Massachusetts, they look at you as though you are the kind of person who goes hunting for boar with a spear and then roasts it over an open flame before taking your wife, Og, back to your cave. Like Owning a gun is that sort of cultural hallmark to a lot of people on the left. And that's, exa- that's all this is. That's all this is. Because if the guy had been standing there, right, if Jay Feely had been standing there with, say, for example, a noose, Right, and basically suggesting that he was going to come after this kid if something happened to his daughter. Nobody would have cared. Everybody thought, okay, funny joke. He's carrying a gun, though. And so the idea is that the gun makes him super aggressive and super scary and super terrible. How dare Jay Feely, that scary, scary, scary man. Guns are not inherently scary, except if you train kids that guns are inherently scary. Now, it's possible to train kids that guns are inherently dangerous, which they are. Okay, but it is also possible to train kids that guns are a tool in the hands of the people who wield them. But the left doesn't see it that way. The gun in Jay Feely's hand made Jay Feely evil. The gun in the hands of the guy in Tennessee made the guy in Tennessee evil. It's not the guy in Tennessee is evil and had a gun, or the guy in Tennessee was mentally ill and had a gun, and that Jay Feely is a fine law-abiding citizen, and he had a gun, and so it's a completely different story. And meanwhile, speaking of cultural intolerance, so Shania Twain has been raked over the coals because Shania Twain uh, had the, made the, the awful, awful, awful mistake of suggesting that she might actually... That, that she might actually go ahead and vote. She's Canadian. She might have voted for Trump. I'll explain to you in just a second. Meanwhile, speaking of people who cannot take a joke, this is an insane thing. So Shania Twain was in an interview, right? She was in an interview, and here's what she said, right? It was an interview at The Guardian. She said, quote, I would have voted for him because even though he was offensive, he seemed honest. Do you want straight or polite? Not that you shouldn't be able to have both. If I were voting, I just don't want BS. I would have voted for a feeling that it was transparent, and politics has a reputation of not being that, right? Okay, so basically she said what everyone in the United States felt, which is that President Trump was more authentic than Hillary Clinton. Now, vote for Hillary Clinton or vote for Donald Trump. You know, there there are a lot of questions about how to vote in that last election cycle, but it is not really in question that Trump is a more authentic human than Hillary Clinton because it's, it's, it's difficult to find a less authentic human than Hillary Clinton. There are legitimately mannequins that are more authentic than Hillary Clinton. There are robots on TV that are significantly more authentic than Hillary Clinton. And not, I'm not even talking about the robots from you know, from from Westworld. I'm talking about like actual rosy robots, like from the Jetsons are more authentic than Hillary Clinton. So this is not a particularly controversial statement, but she then had to tweet out a four-part apology. Okay, here's what she tweeted. Quote, I'd like to apologize to anybody I have offended in a recent interview with The Guardian relating to the American president. The question caught me off guard. As a Canadian, I regret answering this unexpected question without giving my response more context. So number one, first of all, she is Canadian. Why is anybody like upset with how a Canadian would vote? She can't even vote. Who cares? Second of all, it is the most Canadian thing in the history of Canada that you are Canadian, cannot vote in an American election. You're asked about voting in the election, then you apologize to Canadians about how you would have voted in an election that's not in Canada. Pretty Canadian stuff, eh? Well, here's what she said. I would like to apologize to anybody I have offended in a recent interview. And she continued by saying, I'm passionately against discrimination of any kind and hope it's clear from the choices I have made and the people I stand with that I do not hold any common moral beliefs with the current president. Okay, and then she continued along these lines. And she said, I was trying to explain in response to a question about the election that my limited understanding was that the president talked to a portion of America like an accessible person they could relate to as he was not a politician. And she concluded, uh, my answer was awkward, but certainly should not be taken as representative of my values, nor does it mean I endorse him. I make music to bring people together. My path will always be one of inclusivity as my history shows. So, um, again, I'm not sure what's divisive about her saying he was more authentic than Hillary Clinton, so I would have voted for him. She's from Canada. She is from Canada. But this is the world we now live in where every controversy has to be about President Trump. Everything in the world is about President Trump. And it's a point of high irritation to me because my view about President Trump is that President Trump is not that important a human being, right? He's important because he's president of the United States. But as a person, you know, worrying about every little thing Trump does or says, like I think a lot of the stuff that he's said and done is, I think mostly said, I think a lot of stuff he's done is great. I think a lot of the stuff he said is execrable. But so what? You know, he's the president. I think that about every president. The idea that everything has to be about Trump is just an amazing, amazing thing. And the fact that we take the the word of celebrities so seriously is pretty crazy. Now, I will point this out. You know, the entire left, they went insane when Laura Ingram on Fox News suggested that LeBron James should shut up and dribble, right? Even though she wrote a book called Shut Up and Sing about the Dixie Chicks in 2004. 
They went nuts over Laura Ingram. How could Laura Ingram say such a thing to LeBron James? Shut up and dribble. I said at the time, listen, I think it's kind of a, you know, he can say whatever he wants. Is he an expert on politics? Not really. That's really what Laura was saying, I think. Okay, but the entire left said to Shania Twain, shut up and sing. So how is it, I don't know how you can hold those two thoughts in mind at the same time. You, can, you, that, that you can't say to LeBron James, shut up and dribble, but you can say to Shania Twain, shut up and sing. Very weird and demonstrative, demonstrative again of the fact that when it comes to the left, it's the silencing that is more important than the reality. Now, I will say this. The fact that we grant our celebrities any sort of credibility on politics in the first place is bizarre and also the reason why we now have celebrity politicians. Not only President Trump, but Hillary Clinton, let's face it, was a celebrity politician. Okay, Hillary Clinton may have had more of a legal background than President Trump, but when she ran for senator of New York, she'd only been first lady of the United States. That's the, that was not an elected position. She never held elected office, and she went directly to being senator, and then she went directly from that to running for president. So Hillary Clinton was a celebrity politician, too. She was. George W. Bush was a celebrity politician. And because, yes, he was governor of Texas, but the only reason he was governor of Texas is because his last name was Bush. Now, I think Bush was a, a much better president than Hillary Clinton would have been, obviously. I think Donald Trump is, is doing stuff that I never thought a conservative would do in office, and that's great. But the obsession of Americans with celebrity is pretty gross uh, and is not exclusive to the left.